Hello, I'm Dominic Trongle. Um, I wrote this book, which is a record of a tour of Hamlet to every country in the world, a production which I directed and conceived of and managed the execution of while I was artistic director of the Globe. Hello, I'm Nayim Hayat and I played Hamlet in this production of Hamlet. Hello, I'm Jennifer Lang and I played Ophelia, Horatio and Rosencrantz in rotation. How is the process of digesting it? So much raw experience and so much cultural experience and so much historical and political and everything experience. How do you digest it? Is it digestible? I, I, I don't know if it, I don't know if it ever will be. I think that's an ongoing process that you, you're constantly um, reminded of little things, food, snippets of news, and, and it sort of takes you back. It's, it's something that you've got to um, allow time to process. Mm. I find that it's, it's quite a privilege, especially in sort of this really troubled world we're living in right now, like in the past 18 months or so, so much has happened. And to be able to tell people we've managed to take one play to almost every country in the world and be received, you know, on most occasions with such warmth and, you know, such enthusiasm. I think it's, it's a good story. And the fact that we managed to do that, I think is important for, for people to hear in the world right now. It ended up, the book and the thinking, ended up being about a dialogue and it's about Hamlet talking to the world and the world talking back to Hamlet. You know, as I'm writing about soliloquies and I saw in Ecuador uh, their sort of tradition of park theatre and of people in a very open environment with two or three hundred people swilling around them being able to tell a story and doing it in plain clear daylight and that sort of openness of that dynamic and that storytelling dynamic you know, reminded me of the essence of what a soliloquy is and how it is a unpacking and unparceling of thought. I think there was a bit in the book where you, you say exactly that and you put it really well. You, that was in relation to the soliloquy, um, now I am alone. And, and you said that really in that moment, Hamlet is alone, but also the audience and Hamlet as a collective was alone as well. So they're alone together, which which I thought was. It's a lovely joke, that. I mean, it's a it's a really well placed theatrical joke. That, you know, you know it from doing it. You turn around, and you go, now I'm alone to a load of people, and you are, yeah. I think I say, you know, you're all sailing on ship Hamlet together, and the problems have become collective problems, and we moved through a lot of places where people wanted change, and people were hungry for change and desperate. Uh, and active change, often. And I think that where my previous understanding of Hamlet the play had been that it was a was something that you're slightly given at a young age, which is that it's a journey towards peace and a journey towards contentment and a journey towards the restoration of some sort of spiritual status quo that we can all settle into and let the world be as it is. I think the process of going from place to place around the world made me think that it's not about that, it's about change and it's about being restless and it's about being properly angry and properly wanting something new and something different. In Sudan, every time, every time there was any mention of vengeance or revenge or uh, any kind of sense of getting revenge on Claudia. It was like wildfire. They were clapping, they were cheering. Anytime I went for my sword or anyone went for their sword, it was sort of like, great, great was going to happen. Yeah. And the poisoning was quite overwhelming, actually. The poisoning of Claudius at the end, where he sort of, you know, he sat on the box. And that was, a, I mean, it got a massive round, which went on, which seemed like an eternity. And it's quite scary, actually. Was, I remember thinking, I remember that the, the, the getting off the stage and a few of us chatting about 
was actually quite a scary moment because it wasn't, it didn't feel um, superficial, it felt very um, desired. I think we all remember the same events a little differently, so it's always quite nice to chat to each other about what we remember about a particular country, I think. And, and like Naeem says, like, I don't think we'll ever stop travelling, we'll, we'll not stop remembering what those countries meant to us at that point in our lives as well. So I think, and we, we all said that the tour was like packing a whole lifetime into two years. So it's, yeah, we'll never stop reflecting on it, I don't think. There's just too much packed in there. It must be very nice that you've got the definitive version of some of these experiences now. <laughs> <laughs>